Captain, what is your name? What is my name? My name is... Father. It's more of a title than a name, but Father, it will be. Uh, what is the name of your flagship? My flagship name is... Pew Pew... No. Yeah, Pew Pew... Nature. Pew Pew Nature. That's good. Sol. We are in Sol. After a long... Travel through space. Let's go to the Earth. And see what's going on. Quite a lot, I think. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. Attention, interloper. Heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Urquan. You are trespassing within Urquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now needs to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. That was very low and slow speaking. A real badass voice. Okay. Let's go to the space station. Maybe they can tell what's going on. Attention, unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the Slave Planet Earth. Our Hathaway contact extremely weak. Situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat. Are you the resupply vessel? Well now, no, this is Starship Pew Pew Nader, but we stand ready to assist you, no. Uh Say Planet here is supply vessel. What is going on here? I don't know who you are or why you're here, but right now the only thing I'm worried about is saving the lives of 1900 men and women aboard this starbase, and right now you're our only hope. I can't keep a transmitter on too much longer. We need the power for heat and air, so if you don't have any radioactives on board your vessel, please get some and bring them back here before it's too late. Uh, where can we find the radioactive elements you need? The way to get radioactive in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful, Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Mercury. Watch out for earthquakes and those high temperature areas. We will leave now and find the elements you require. Yes, make sure to mention this the next time I talk with our masters. I'm sure they will reward you. Yes, because they sounded like a nice bunch. Anyways. Mercury it is! Oh, uh, which planet was the Mercury? I think... I... yeah. Okay, let's... let's find out. Mercury... Is it this one? Venus! How about this? Oh my god, it's slow. Mercury, yes, that's good. <clears throat> Let's go and check the place out. A scan and auto scan. Ooh, lots of minerals. Energy. Non biological biological scan. None. Dispatch. 
I think these were the... Oh, 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 no, no, no. Um, I want to take this more expensive stuff. Oh, uh, no, ow. No. Damn it. Let's get back. I want to pick up the rest of the expensive stuff over there. Oh, scan, auto scan. Ah, these bats, because these uh, red and yellow dots are eight and six units per pri price is six and eight bucks per unit. Wow, that was difficult. Okay, let's navigate to go back to the star space spaceport star base space station. Yeah, I'm Captain Father of the Pupunator. Yeah. Find any radioactive elements for our power cores. We are ready to transfer radioactives. Now, as soon as our engineers can refit the energy cores, there, that's much better. Power ratings are climbing, life support is coming back into the green. Deep radar systems and sensors are now online, and I can scan your vessel. What the hell kind of ship is that? Just who are you, Captain? I am Captain Father of the Starship Pew Pew Nader. Pew Pew Nader! We are the survivors of the Star Control Science Research Team in the Vela Star System. Star Control Science Mission, huh? <laughs> Captain, I served as a Star Control Officer during the war aboard several cruisers in the Corward Front. And if there'd been any scientific mission to Vela, I would have heard about it. The mission was highly, ex highly secret. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, there were some rumors that Corridor 9, the Special Operations Division of Star Control, was directing some hush-hush operation near Anderson Space. The Vela Star System, yes, that would be the right direction. So, Captain, if you say it's true, how do you explain that huge alien starship you're flying? And why are you here? What do you want from us? We have returned to Earth to give you the technological secrets of the Precursors and to help you fight the hierarchy. Ah, fight the Urquan. Win back our freedom. I remember having such thoughts myself once, a long time ago. That was in the first years after the defeat, when it was still terrifying to look up and see the bloody glow of the pulsating slave shield overhead. Though day and night we gazed up at the impenetrable wall, as though the sheer power of our hatred would pull it down. But over the years, I spent so much of my time struggling down on the surface, under the shield, and then later up here trying to keep the station alive, that I'd forgotten what it means to be free, to hate our Urquan masters. And now here you are, in an alien ship of unknown power, offering me your assistance to fight against the hierarchy again after all these years. Captain, your offer is intriguing. It's tempting to think that with your advanced precursor technology, we can somehow crack the Earth's slave shield and reassemble the Alliance to attack the hierarchy. And this time, win the damn war. Consider the consequences if you should fail. The Urquan won't just punish us here on the station, they'll exact a gruesome retribution on the surface below as well. Before I commit this station to helping you attack the Urquan and accepting the risk of annihilation if we are defeated, I have to make sure that you and your ship have what it takes to oppose the hierarchy. I'll make you a deal. If you can eliminate the alien base on the moon and get rid of that threat at least, I will seriously consider your offer. We shall go now and neutralize the base. Actually, what details can you give us? 
about the base on the moon. After yeah. the Iroquois erected the slave shield around the Earth and established this space station, they decided to leave a contingent of combat ships close to the Earth to keep watch on our planet and confirm that they were obeying the Iroquois slave laws. I'm certain they're still out there on the surface of the moon because we can pick up a constant stream of alien broadcasts. We shall go now and neutralize the base. Be careful, Captain. There are probably a dozen Spathy eluders and Ilrath Avengers down there on the lunar surface. I don't know why they haven't come after you yet, but when they do, you'd better have your weapons armed and your thrusters burning hot. So, to the moon it is! I mean, oh my god, I missed the moon. It's so small. There you go. Uh, scan. Auto scan. The minerals, they are cheap minerals. Their price is only like two bucks per unit. Dispatch. Uh, uh, wrong key. Again. Let's waste some fuel. Oh, uh, there it is. Yeah, okay, let's pick this up, this stuff. It's like three units that, I mean... The price is three per unit. I don't know what the currency is, but... Okay, let's go check them. Space Station. Report from surface. We have discovered an alien base and have explored its interior. The installation must have been abandoned many years ago, but great care has been taken to make it appear active. Life support systems are functioning, fusion generators are full output, and robotic construction vehicles have been programmed to roam the lunar surface, bulldozing moon dust into random piles. In addition, we have found the installations hyperwave locked in a transmit mode, endlessly playing the same alien recording. Although we cannot translate the message, our Xenothek in Xen Rigby believes the message is some kind of alert or mayday broadcast. The base is filled with useful materials and equipment. We will scavenge as much, much as we can and bring it aboard immediately. Very good, okay. Um, let's navigate back to the star base. Space station. Have you dealt with the base yet? Uh, we found the base. It was abandoned years ago. Darn. All these years we've been listening to their incoherent broadcast and we never even guessed. Captain, listen closely. Long range sensors show a ship closing on this station fast. Our computer identifies it as Ilrath, Avenger class. I think you've uh -oh. got a fight on your hands, Captain. Your best bet is to wait until you have point blank range. Captain, it's jamming our signal. Point blank. Okay. By the fetid breath of the dark twin, Kazan, a human and an alien starship. How fascinating. When I intercepted that Urquan drone and learned that an unidentified starship had approached Earth, I never expected to find such a remarkable vehicle in the hands of a human. Humans are prey animals, weak and helpless, but here is a human in an armored starship, and therefore in direct violation of the oath of fealty. I am sure our masters, the Orquan, will punish Earth most severely for this treachery. When I present them with the twisted wreckage of your ship and your many charred corpses. 
Well, that's unfriendly of you, Mr. Spider Thingy. Where the hell did you come from? Since you will soon be dead, I will gladly explain. We have spent many years gleefully preying on the Pakanka. They are a pitiful, easily killed species. And we would have continued in this divine worship of Dogar and Kazon, but we required additional crew members and repairs to our cloaking device. So we departed the Jiglas constellation and set course for home. But before we had reached our region of space, we detected the passage of a nearby vessel, the Urquad Drone. It informed us about you, so here we are. And now, you die! I don't wanna... Don't make me die. That's it. That's how you deal with the wrath. Zogak. What a beautiful sight, Captain. I haven't seen an Avenger blown away like that since the battle in Draco. I guess you've shown that you can handle yourself in battle, Captain. So my last reservation about helping you has been dissolved. I will commit this station to helping free Earth and defeat the Urquan. We may get our atoms rearranged in the process, but by God, Captain, we're going to try. So the obvious first step is to get the precursor equipment and software over here so that we can make it work with our ship repair fabricators. But then what, Captain? Then, Commander, we will proceed to kick some major alien butt. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yes, Captain. We'll do just that. By the way, Captain, I think we need a name for this new alliance we're going to forge. And since it was your idea, it's only fair that you get the honor of naming it. So, what will it be? Well, the new alliance of free stars. Or the Confederate of Alien Nations. United Federation of Worlds. Empire of Father. Yeah, yeah, um, new, uh, oh my god. Uh, um, new Alliance okay, of Free Stars. that sounds pretty inspiring. So be it. The New Alliance of Free Stars. Yeah. Now, Captain, I expect the configuration process for the Starbase to take at least two weeks, so let's get to work. I have good news to report, Captain. We have successfully integrated the precursor technology from your ship into our fabricator system, and as you can see, we've already begun minor repairs on your ship, patching up some of the micrometeorite holes. We noticed that your ship does not have an emergency warp escape unit, so our engineers rigged up some for you and each of your escorts. Now, you should be able to escape from a bad situation with the touch of a button. But there is a cost, however. The unit gulps up five fuel units each time your precursor ship uses it. Also, we now have a limited capacity to make modifications to your ship, to refine starship fuel, to build additional combat ships, and to train new members of your crew for the flagship and any ships you acquire for your fleet. Captain, I know you're eager to get to work, so I'll be brief. If you have any questions how this star base works, what resources we need, or just some background information on the galaxy, don't hesitate to ask. Okay. First, Commander, I have minerals of flowed. The more minerals you bring us, Captain, the okay. faster we'll be able to tackle the Urquan. Thank you. Before proceeding, I need some additional background information. Certainly, Captain. What do you need to know? Would you elaborate your facilities here at the Starbase? We can modify your precursor ship, build additional combat vessels, and supply you with fuel and crew. Okay. What can you do to enhance and modify the pupunator? Our engineers and precursor specialists agree with the scientists from your world that your starship was designed to be a workhorse vehicle, which could be easily reconfigured for different missions by adding or swapping self-contained equipment packs, which we call modules. The modules we can build right now are thruster units, which make your ship move faster, attitude jets, which allow you to rotate the ship more quickly, Crew pods, which provide life support facilities for up to 50 additional crew members. Storage bays, which increase your ship's cargo capacity for mineral resources. 
fuel tanks, which hold an additional 50 units of fuel, dynamos, which feed energy into your combat energy batteries, improving your weapon's rate of fire, and last but not least, ion bolt guns, combat weaponry, the exact function of which depends on its location aboard the ship. When put in the first or front module slot, it fires a single shot forward. When put in the second slot, it fires two shots, spread to the left and right of center. When put in the third slot, it fires two shots directly left and right. And when put in the last or rear slot, it fires a single shot straight backwards. Okay, all over the place then. Attitude. How will I get fuel for the pupinator? This base is designed to service hierarchy ships. Fortunately, your flagship uses the same stabilized antimatter technology as hierarchy vessels and will be able to synthesize what you need. However, due to the size of your ship, we'll have to produce vast quantities of fuel, which will be a substantial drain on our resources. How can I assemble a fleet of fighting ships? Our shipyard facilities are sophisticated and fully automated, permitting a handful of star-based personnel to do the same job as 500 vac-suited construction workers. However, the only designs that we had in our computers were incomplete hierarchy ship designs. Things looked grim until one of the officers came forward with an amazing story. Even though the Urquan destroyed every Earthling cruiser in the fleet nearly 20 years ago, one of my maintenance engineers was a Starship production assistant at the Detroit shipyard. When Earth was conquered, she was ordered to destroy all ship construction databases. But she secretly made copies of the blueprint disk and then kept them with her ever since. These disks contain all the data we need to build as many Earthling cruisers as you want, provided you, Captain, can supply the large amounts of mineral resources required to build those vessels. In theory, Captain, we could build alien starships here if we had designs for them. However, it's a well-known fact that alien vessels just can't be flown in combat without native starship captains at the helm. How will we acquire additional personnel for my ship? We have almost 2,000 highly motivated, skilled professionals aboard this starbase, and every single one of them wants a berth aboard your starship. However, each hand we lose to your ship means less manpower here at the starbase, and this is reflected in the crew RU cost. As long as you don't lose too many crew members to combat or planet exploration, the RU cost will remain static. But we have only so many warm bodies on this star base, and if your needs for crew grow beyond a certain point, the cost could increase dramatically. Would you please explain your resource allocation system? As you know, Captain, we've committed the entire output of this station to building your flagship and your battle fleet into the strongest force possible. However, our resources are very limited, and we feel you must decide how we are to spend our effort and materials. To aid you in making these decisions, we have implemented a resource allocation scheme. We provide you with a numerical assessment of the station's resources and ascribe a cost to each task we can perform and each device we can build. It's up to you to decide how you're going to spend your resource units, or RU as we call them. To acquire more RU, you must bring resources back to the starbase. These resources can be either in the form of mineral ores gathered from planet surfaces or already refined metals and other valuable materials from the wreckage of enemy starships. What kind of resources are most useful to our mission? The most straightforward way you can accumulate resource units is to bring mineral ores back to this starbase. There are probably enough resources in just the nearby dozen stars to build your ship into a powerful battleship or to create a strong task force of combat vessels. I would also recommend that you build several additional storage bays. When gathering minerals, focus on cleaning out one star system at a time. This way you minimize the cost of travel through hyperspace. Yes. What use are our planet's landers sophisticated? I think we have been talking enough What now. else can I tell you? Not much. I don't require additional, additional information. Uh, we will chat later. These are stuff I'm intrigued, but now... Fine. Is there anything else you need? I graze some action. Goodbye, we'll Commander. Lots of minerals, Captain. Yes, I will. Right. Outfit starship. Mm, well, first of all, we need fuel.
Oh. That makes it expensive. Now that's expensive. Module. Okay, the thir uh, turning jet. Let's buy turning jet because because the driving was really annoying. Thruster. That's it. And I think we are out of mine up. Mm. Modules. What modules do we have? Crew pod, 2000. Ooh, that's expensive. Storage bay, 750. Useful, don't have money for it. Fuel tank, 500. That could be useful also. Dino unit 2000, not yet. I am not sure about the fighting with this ship. I'd rather build those earthling cruisers, those small ones. Crew pod, yeah, okay, we went around. Um, uh, exit menu, that's it. Shipyard, let's see. Oh, right, crew. Well, that's pretty cheap, considering one crewman is three bucks, and while well, one unit of fuel was twenty. Okay. Well, let's fill up. There you go. How much does this one? One thousand hundred. Pretty expensive. That's only thing we can build at the moment. Okay, that's enough. I think we are good to depart space and start our adventure.